Sounds good. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this is a really exciting event for us. Uh, today we are going to be listening to our amazing volunteers uh, presenting their visualizations that they've done for the Academics Without Borders uh, organization. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Mindy as well as Greg who have uh, graciously offered their data set and sponsored this project for us. Um, and so thank you very much uh, for, uh, for being part of this for social good. Uh, the agenda is very uh, straightforward. After my uh, introduction, I will pass it on over to, to Greg and Mindy uh, for a few words, and then we will hear from our founder, Chloe, who is making a guest appearance, special appearance on our virtual event. And uh, then we will pretty much hand it over to all the volunteers who, um, and it, it's great people, there's people dialed in from Australia, from uh, the States, uh, Europe, Toronto, Canada, so it's truly an, an international um, event, so it's, it's pretty exciting. And, uh, and then we'll just do a quick, quick wrap up, uh, Keith will wrap it up, and uh, that, that's the event. So I am going to pass it on over to, to Greg and Mindy from uh, Academics Without Borders. Okay, Vanitha, thank you very much. And uh, it's a, a real pleasure to see everybody uh, here this, uh, today. For, for us in Montreal, it's uh, this early evening. For many of you, it's a different time of the day. So uh, anyway, it's, it's great uh, to be here. And we really are incredibly appreciative of all of the work that all of you have done, uh, impressed with the quality of what you've done and really grateful that you're, uh, you're willing to support us in the way that you have. And it, it's just uh, very exciting. We, we believe in, in what the organization does um, and it's terrific to have this kind of support. I should say that with me is Mindy Gordon, who is the um, executive officer and the board secretary at Academics Without Borders. Um, Ian Graham is somewhere as well. Ian is uh, a member of our board. Uh, and has a special interest in, in this initiative. I don't think Corey's here, is she? No. So that's, uh, those, are, those are the representatives of the group here uh, to this evening. Um, you all know quite a bit about Academics Without Borders given uh, what you've already done, but let me just say a, a few words in, in my own voice uh, about the organization. It's built on some very simple principles and we do uh, something really very straightforward. Um, we believe and there are recognize, I guess, the role that higher education plays in creating um, wealthy, prosperous, healthy, uh, and stable and just societies. Uh, may our colleagues in the less prosperous parts of the world play that role and recognize it as much as those of us in the more prosperous parts of the world. Unfortunately, many universities in uh, low and middle income countries around the world do not have the resources that they need to try to um, increase their capacity and the quality of their programs in the way that they believe would best serve their communities uh, and their countries. We also recognize and are, are uh, very fortunate to be able to draw on volunteers who in much the same spirit as, as you folks are, are operating through Viz for Social Good on volunteers from universities around the world, in, in our case, the majority of them are from Canada. That's where we're based and it's where our, our most of our connections are, but we actually draw them from quite a few other countries as well. And these are retired academics, working academics, staff members at universities um, who are and colleges who are willing to uh, donate their time basically to act as expert consultants in a way that um, the universities that they're working with, our partner universities, would not otherwise be able to afford. As I'm sure all of you know, that kind of high level of consulting service is expensive and well beyond the means of the partner universities that we work with. We basically are totally demand driven. So we uh, operate simply where our partner universities tell us what they need, whether it's to improve their, uh, their, their program in, in uh, public health nursing, whether to do to create a residency program in family medicine, to uh, begin a social work program for people with disabilities, uh, to in, improve their library operations, their registrar's office. It really doesn't matter. Whatever they think they need to solve their problems, 
we go and try and find them an engineer uh, and volunteer to do it. Uh, we've run about 150 programs or have approved a, a, either in progress or have finished about 150 projects. Uh, we've sent probably close to 200 volunteers now over the last seven or eight years uh, to 30 countries around the world approximately. Uh, so we're in a going concern. We receive our funding from a variety of sources, most notably uh, MasterCard Foundation, who are our, our largest funders. Um, but we're a, a very um, efficient financial operation. We, we, we always work from home. We're a virtual organization. We don't have any brick and mortar. Our staff is, is very lean and uh, many of our staff contribute some or all of their time on a, on a pro bono basis. Um, and uh, we therefore are able to put whatever money we get from our funders directly into our projects. We're kind of hung up right now because the heart and soul of what we do is international travel. We, we send people all over the world. And obviously right now that's basically it's in suspension, but we're working hard with our partners, now doing a lot of online work, asking where, what parts of our projects can be converted to online method, uh, modality. And that's working very well. And, and we're also, of course, um, anxiously awaiting the time when we'll be able to send people out again, whenever that might be. So again, thank you. Your, your support is tremendous. This is an exciting adventure for us. We've been impressed with what we've seen and looking forward to this evening. Back to you, Vanessa. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Chloe, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, awesome. Hi, everybody. I'm super, super excited to hear for those who are on the Biz for Social Good team. Every time when you guys see me, I'm in pajama. But now, today, I'm so excited. I changed the official like, outfit to see you guys. So it really shows how much I'm re really excited to see you guys. So wave, wave your hand if you're also <laughs> excited to see me. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So yeah, today I'm here. Oh, wow. People are so excited to see me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so today I'm not just here to say hi or showing off my really beautiful outfit. <laughs> I'm here to share a little bit a uh, story about Viz for Social Good. So we actually started like three years ago and we, uh, we have a quite interesting story that I want to share with you. So I prepare slides. Cool. So I actually moved to Silicon Valley, San Francisco um, a few years ago. And when I first moved there for a tech job, I was so, so excited because, you know, you got to see the all amazing technology people are talking all the time, but it's also quite intimidating because you feel like, wow, everybody is like starting Google, starting Twitter, Facebook, but I can create visualization, but can I change the world? Can I create something really tangible and make the change to the world? And that's something that I always keep thinking ever since I moved to Silicon Valley. And there's a one thing really inspired me is Helena Price. She's a photographer from uh, Silicon Valley and she started a project called Techie. And that project is essentially she interview 100 people and take a picture of 100 people coming from underrepresented background. And she used those like story and the photo to tell the story about people in Silicon Valley is actually much more diverse and really drive the conversation about diversity and inclusion and really drive the change to the, to the Silicon Valley and also tech world. And one of the message she was talking about through this project is everyone, literally everyone can leverage her or his own strength to make a difference. And that really resonated with me because I used to think that you got to be, to be a coder or developer to change the world. But even with my skill set, data visualization, I can do something really positive too. So I started like thinking about then what should I do? And that's how I started Viz for Social Good. Initially, it's like a super tiny personal project. I just create a bunch of data visualization focused on the topic that I'm passionate about, which is diversity and inclusion. So I talk about 
for example, why women leave their job or women in politics, or there's a, a conversation gap in gender, that kind of thing. But along the way, I realized I wasn't the only one who is passionate about using visualization for good. There's so, so, so many people. So I turned this like a tiny, small project into your organization and community. Now, everybody, you guys are a part of the community. So now, this for Social Good, it's a 4,000 uh, uh, volunteer community around the world. Check this picture. Isn't that amazing? you probably in one of the picture. So it's like a really cool like initiative now. A lot of people coming from different world join the uh, visualization and use your own skill set to make a difference to the world. And we create a lot of visualization and work with a lot of different nonprofit organization, including a couple of the UN agency, a lot of local com uh, community and charity. And one of my favorite story is uh, two years ago, we worked with Central Asia Institute, and they are trying to bring more education to girls in Central Asia. So we help them to create a couple of the visualization to help them to raise the fund. And the funding they were able to raise through our visualization actually helped them to build 30 10 schools in Central Asia. And that's always my favorite thing about this for social good, because you'll think that's the visualization you created it, it's just a visualization. It's just something on Tableau Public or in your computer, but it's not. It's something that can actually move the world and make the tangible changes. So I've been seeing a lot of amazing visualization you guys created today, and i just really excited and share the same passion with you and really excited to see uh, what you created for Academic Without Border. And thank you so much for being part of our journey. It's so, so amazing to have you all. So that, that's it from me. Thank you all. Great. Thank you so much, Chloe. Um, so Frederick, I'm going to turn it over to you. You'll be running through uh, with each of the volunteers to present. And I understand some of you, it's very late. Uh, you're ready to go to bed. So you are the first ones on to present. So uh, Frederick, I'll turn it over to you. Yep. So yep. we, thanks for the intros. So we had 27 submissions total, which is awesome. Um, we've had 50 pe 15 people, one five that uh, has, have said they wanted to uh, present. So we're going to uh, give four minutes each. So you'll be sharing your screen. So make sure you got your Tableau, Power BI, your Viz on your PC and your desktop, and your desktop, and you share your desktop like, as we just quickly did. So four minutes to present, and we do Q and A at the end. Um, so I've got a run sheet, uh, which is based on the Google Form. So I might just call your name out. Some people said they wanted to present early, like uh, Ada or Mariana, I think, wanted to be next, and, or maybe Alex. So we'll start. I've, uh, I've got the timekeeping as well. So I might just, when you're getting close to four minutes, or so three and a half, I might just uh, say hello, getting close to a wrap up. Uh, but yeah, keep it chill and relax and just tell us your story. So we're going to start with um, Ada. And also, if hello, everyone, everyone can. Yeah, make sure everybody's on mute except the person talking, of, of course. We can hear you, ready to go. You can see me, you can hear me, all good? Yeah. So, hi everyone. Thank you for letting me first. It's uh, mid midnight in Luxembourg, so yeah, <laughs> before I fall asleep. So, um, yeah, my name is Aida Braniet and I'm super happy to present my data visualization for Academics Without Borders and Beast for Social Good. I'm going to share my screen. There you go. Yeah, we can see it. Good. Um, so, um, the first time when I approached this analysis and I saw the, the data and the, and the description of the project, I thought that the, the most impactful visualization would be to compare both models. So to see the visiting instructor approach versus the teach the teacher model that the Academics Without Borders uh, uses. So where did I start? I started doing the math because uh, it was all described on the text. Oops, I hope it's gonna load. Yeah, so yeah, it's in paper. <laughs> so, 
so I did all my calculations in paper because sometimes I think uh, I think better on paper for this kind of uh, easy calculations. So I did uh, I calculated the number of visiting instructors, uh, local faculty members, uh, graduate students, and clients for every year and approach. And I did the calculation over two years. And it's a, it's not accumulative values, but the actual impact on that year. And having these numbers in mind, I generated the data because it's a, a data I had to create. And it's basically um, a row by year method and stakeholder. And this is allowing me to draw all the data dots afterwards in the cycles. So the result is, this database where we can see a uh, one dot per person um, about the visualization very quick i just use the um, uh, scene and cosine functions and random functions to show uh, the dots random minds around the circles and on the left side we have the visiting instructor and on the right side the teach the teacher model so if we look at the numbers um here we can highlight, for example, clients. That is what we are interested at the end to see what's the impact of a, our approach. On year one, we see that the, um, the impact is quite uh, interesting because uh, we have a lot more clients impacted all by the Teach the Teacher model. Um, exactly 6,250 uh, 6, clients compared to 1,250. But we, when we go to year two, it's even more impressive. And at the beginning, at the beginning, I tried to simulate it uh, over many years, but it was just super crowded. But I think it's a um, it's a very nice way to see visually how well the the method that the Academics Without Borders um, is using the, how well the method works. So well done. the The data proves that this works very well. And that's it about my dashboard. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you're well on time, well done. So next time we have Mariana. If Mariana yes. wants to jump in. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Oh, good. Okay, so this is my dashboard. Um, first thing I did here um, was, was to put uh, Academics Without Borders uh, mission here. And then I divided the dashboard uh, into four parts guided by this line, which, which are uh, projects, what uh, they do, project donations, the impact of a donation, the power of one, the difference between the teaching models, and the call to action. So the first one uh, is the projects. So the first thing is this big, uh, this huge number here, which is uh, the total number of projects. Here, each point is a project. I did this because I wanted to make each one of them unique. So when you hover it here, you, you can see the number of the project, uh, the, the name of the project, sorry, and the description and the country where it happened. Here is a line chart with the number of projects per year. Um, and also when you uh, hover here, you see which are the, uh, the projects uh, highlighted in the big number uh, that happened this year. Then I wanted to um, value not only the partner universities, which are the universities help it, but also the volunteers. So here is um, a bar chart with the main volunteer universities and the main partner universities based on the number of projects. Uh, but I wanted to put all of them because I want I, I think that all of them are important. <laughs> so I put here uh, in this tooltip uh, the list of all the volunteer universities and um, the partner universities. And here a map uh, with the, the countries uh, where the, uh, this project happened. Uh, and here the, the size of the, the circle is the number of projects. Uh, the second part is the project financials. Uh, so here I wanted to show um, here in gray uh, the part of the project which, which is covered by the donations. Uh, and this dark blue, uh, which it, um, is the, the total value of the, the, the projects, um, what would be, in fact, 
which is uh, the sum of the volunteer, the partners, and the donation. Um, so here it shows that each dollar uh, donated will be multiplied by six uh, on average per uh, project. Um, here the power of one, I wanted to first uh, show um, uh, how uh, one volunteer can help. help. Uh, so at least one volunteer uh, will um, uh, uh, in the end help um, 1,250 um, citizens. Uh, but I wanted to show also the difference between the models. Uh, so um, with the, teach, the teacher model, uh, which the volunteer will ha will uh, train uh, five local trained uh, professors. Um, in the end, uh, six thousand two hundred and fifty um, local citizens will be benefited. So it's a huge difference, and I wanted to show it uh, through this um, interactivity here with this this button. The difference. Uh, so here um, it is highlighted. Um, uh, the, the difference in, in black um, that are the, the local citizens benefit. And uh, in this part here, I wanted to give the user the option to go straight to the website and to, um, to help. So proposing a project, uh, making a donation or uh, volunteering. And that, that is my, this is my dashboard. Thank you. Spot on time, with seven seconds to spare. Well done, Mariana. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, just a quick shout out. We wanted to present. I know, I know we've got third Europeans that are craving to present. Otherwise, I'll just go through the list. Do, do we have anyone that wants to jump in and present? Otherwise, I'll ask um, Alex. But if someone is craving to present now, let me know. No, no one? Oh, maybe Alex, you want to jump in? Okay. Uh, thanks, Frederick. I'll give it a shot here. I switched computer. So I should be able to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah okay. I see your screen now, it's coming up. Okay. So that's it, you've got four minutes. All right. <laughs> um, thanks, uh, Academics Without Borders team and uh, Viz uh, for social good. I'm pretty new to the organization and I managed to slap something together uh, for this challenge. Um, I really enjoyed it because I'm learning Tableau and I'm um, going for my certification. Um, in the spirit of uh, teaching the teacher, I'm going to point out some features that I used uh, for this dashboard uh, to show uh, Academics Without Borders projects around the world and perhaps inspire some suggestions for the uh, website. Um, one sort of nitpick about the site is um, a lot of the information about the projects is more text-based and um, I don't really, I can't really see what's going on with all the different projects. So I wanted to explore a graphical approach that might be more engaging and exciting for potential uh, volunteers and sponsors. <clears throat> um, and perhaps even uh, you might want to uh, place a button on how um, they can apply or just build a pipeline of people to um, get more projects. Uh, so I managed to make two prototypes and uh, refine them with, uh, with help from one volunteer. And um, what I designed first was using the icons from uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. But uh, my friend pointed out, well, this might, their work, uh, Academics Without Borders work might have more to do with um, actual universities and not the community at large. Uh, so I worked on a different prototype using um, icons representing the some of the top disciplines um, of people who have volunteered for the universities. Um, and so let me see if I can switch uh, to my visualization uh, to be able to just quickly highlight what I did is I instead of making filters on the Tableau dashboard, I made each of these icons a uh, filter for the map below, right? And I imported these icons into the shapes. And so if I click on social work, it'll, it should show me, it should show me just a social work uh, icons on the map. We'll give it another shot. There we go. 
and I implemented what's called a URL action. So if I click on Ghana, I'll go to the featured project page there. And so it's just one way to be able to navigate through the uh, projects. And um, here I'm at the, the specific page for Ghana. Um, yeah, so I hope it's an idea for, um, for the AWB uh, team. And uh, thanks so much for having me present. Uh, and thank you, Frederick, for uh, leading this. That's great, Alex, and I love the, uh, the thinking and the, the process. I think that's really cool. So uh, next on the line, we have Ashish. Unless, as I said, I'm not someone who wants to present and jump in, but uh, I've got the list. I'm a bit of a dictator, so I'm going through the, the list of <laughs> submissions. So Ashish, you want to jump in? Yep, sure. Thanks. Let me just share my screen. That's it. You see the screen now? You ready? Yeah, let me go full screen. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Ashish and I'm based in Sydney, Australia. Um, my visualization is solely focused on academics without borders projects and the impact they have had in uplifting the capability of education in so many developing economies. So while building the visualization, Three figures stood out to me really well, and there were 31 countries, 58 partner institutes in 10 years. Just in a span of 10 years, all through pro bono engagement was an incredible achievement, and I wanted to highlight this in my visualization from the get-go. And then from the map, we can see the projects that, that AWB has supported are spread all over Asia, Southeast Asia, and Africa, and Latin America. And after three years of foundation, AWB started off with seven projects in five different countries in 2010. And so far they have completed 122 projects and AWB supported nine projects in 2017, which was the highest in any given year. These projects were spread across four different continents in 11 countries, which is a testimony to the hard work of each and every person who has been involved with AWB and who has helped them in uplifting the education quality in many different countries. And then I looked at what discipline those projects were and almost one third of the projects were required help from AWB in building capacity around medicine, computer science and public health. For example, offering first PhD program in computer science in Kana or building medical research facility in Nepal or developing a master's program in public health in Brazil. And then I want to look at which universities have completed the highest number of projects with AWB. University of Liberia and University of Cape Coast stood out. And an interesting trend which I observed here was majority of the institutes which have partnered with AWB more than once or multiple times lie majorly on African continent. That might be because of their ongoing partnership with different universities in Africa. And then through my visualization, I wanted to tell the story of each and every project that have been undertaken because they essentially tell the story of different kind of activities being taken in poor countries or each and every project contributes to cascading expertise across society and generations. So you can hover over the circle and you can actually read the story of each of these projects. And I wanted to build this chart so that to inspire maybe more people to join AWB in their mission, maybe through volunteering or providing grants or donating. That's all about my visualization. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me after the event as well. Over to you, Frederick. Great, Ashish, that's great and uh, nice. Uh, nice design, nice use of black background. I think it's uh, very nice and clean and very good story. So awesome. Virtual clap for you. Thank you. <laughs> I guess we can clap in uh, Zoom, can we? <laughs> clap, clap. You should be able to send reactions. Yeah. Uh, next, we've got Kate. You here, Kate? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Great. Hi everybody. Um, my name's Kate. So great to see all these visualizations. Um, I was just downstairs in the kitchen and I said to my two kids, 
oh, I have to go upstairs because I'm doing this thing for data visualization for social good. And they said, mom, that's your favorite thing ever, data visualization for social good. So Chloe, you have two teenage fans here in Rhode Island. Um, Send them up. So yeah, right. Um, let's see. So I'm a public health researcher and data scientist. I'm based in Boston. And um, I've actually worked with several nonprofits on exactly this kind of thing. Usually nonprofits have some kind of little data set somewhere that they're sitting on that can be exploited in this way to, to make into a message for donation, for recruiting volunteers and things. So um, I was so happy and delighted to find this challenge. I think it's great. So when I looked at the data and looked at the website, the first question that I had was, um, who's the audience for this visualization that we're putting together? And it wasn't quite clear to me from the challenge. So I just decided for myself, I thought, well, let's say the audience is donors or potential donors. So these are people that we want to entice to support the organization with our brilliant work presented very simply and very easily digested. <clears throat> so I decided instead of doing like an interactive tableau page, I decided to do something a little different, which is to make like a 90 second like ad that someone could just watch, which means you, 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 you reduce the amount of text, you know, it's not very text heavy. It's like super, super simplification when you're doing something like this. Um, and I decided to center it around five simple sentences that I could make with the various data sets. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to mention before I just show it. Oh, I decided um, you had included the um, HDI, the Human Development Index, in the data. And I, I kind of looked at that and thought, oh, I think there are other data sets or other indicators, international indicators that might be kind of closer to the work that you do. I think someone else said like some of these things are too far away conceptually from, you know, the higher ed mission. So I decided to use a different um, statistics, which you'll see. Um, oh, and I also wanted to say that I took the color palette from your site. I think a lot of other people did too. Just looking at the other ones, I can see that they did too. And I also tried to match the fonts. So, but you know, seeing what everybody's done here, you have a, a, an embarrassment of riches. You could use all this stuff and totally generate all kinds of interest in Academics Without Borders, which I think is awesome. Okay, I am going to share my screen and just play the thing straight from here. <clears throat> Oops, hold on. You have to share the screen. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we can see it coming. Okay. 90 seconds.
All right, there you go. Thanks, Kate. Awesome. I think I really loved it. Yeah. I don't know about Great. everyone else, but uh, clap, clap, clap. Uh, <laughs> very different from Tableau, Power BI, other. And uh, you use PowerPoint as, it, as well, did you say? I did, yeah. yeah. I just used PowerPoint for that. Yeah, and, and then used a screen capture to, you know, after I set up the recording. It's cool. Recording. Loved it. So, yeah. Well done again. Um, next, I guess we just need to move on. There's so many other, so many other stuff. Uh, Michael, I've got Michael on, the, on my list to start. You hear Michael? Yes, right, I can yeah. see you. Yeah, hey. Good hey. Evening. Can you hear me? Yes, good. Right. You got the floor. All right. So thank you so much. My name is Michael Badu. I'm calling from from Nigeria actually, and I really want to say, um, and from where I am, I know how much the work you, uh, EWB is doing and how impactful it is. And I want to say, um, we're really, really, I'm really, really proud. I'm really excited to volunteer for such a project, and you should keep it up, EWB and V for social good as well. So I'll just go straight to um, share my screen. Sorry. Um. Just give me a minute. Sorry, second. Yes. <laughs> Does it come up or there's a security issue? It's not it's not the security issue, so I'm coming, sorry. Can you see it now? No, still not we can see that. So did, are you clicking on the share screen button? Oh yeah, it's coming up now. Huh? Yeah, that's it. Oh okay. great. Oh. All right. Yes. Sorry for the delay. Okay, That's yeah. Right. So, um, nice. yeah, I work. I work with e health for everyone. So, say data analytics firm, and we usually do. <coughs> do I don't prepare the dashboards? Um, I see how they prepare dashboards for key decision makers and stakeholders. And when I got the data, I just said, <coughs> "Yeah, let me just prepare um, something really simple and interactive, right? Um, something a, a stakeholder or a decision maker can just easily get his hands on, look around it and see the impact EWB, sorry, see the impact EWB has had in Africa and other countries as well. And this can like propel them to donate or volunteer in any other way possible, right? So um, the first section of the dashboard just shows um, EWB's impact at the glance. You see the projects, the countries, impacted institutions, volunteer institutions, and the disciplines as well. So you can go to each country, you can hover on each country and see um, how, you can see the amount of projects that have been executed per year. Right? So it's just really simple and very, very interactive. So same way here, you come here, you see the amount of projects that have been executed per year. Um, if you can see here, 20, it's quite obvious 2017 was a really, really awesome year for AWB. And then as well, um, you can also see the disciplines that, um, that have really been focused on, right? Um, I know there are some disciplines that in the data set, there are some disciplines, um, there are some sections that had like no disciplines there. So I just ignored those ones while um, analyzing this part. But same here, you could also just hover around and see how many projects have been executed in each discipline um, over the years. So yeah, like I said, I tried to make it really interactive. So you could come here, just go look at the countries where AWB has worked and just select anyone and see how, um, and see what impact they have had in that country. So you, I'm trying to select Ghana, for instance, now. Um, you can, once it opens, I'll just see the amount of projects that have been um, executed in Ghana, the cities, um, the cities also, and the particular project title that has been implemented in that particular city. I've also seen the volunteer institutions, the cities and the disciplines as well. So yeah, at the end, I just have a, like a little quote here from one of our African leaders. Um, Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, which is rightly so. And um, 
yeah, call to action here just to motivate anyone who is really excited to be part of this project to just simply click and um, volunteer one way, one way or the other. Right, yeah, so I think this is just, this is just it, really simple and just, I just try to like make the whole information really simple to digest and all. So yeah, I really want to say thank you so much for this opportunity and I think, you, and I know you guys are doing really, really awesome work. But yeah. Great, great Michael. Thank, thanks for that. It's yeah. an awesome presentation. I also want to remind uh, we are recording, so we're going to be sharing the, the, the video on YouTube and we'll also be record, uh, sharing all the links uh, on the on the on the Slack channel and also on the on the blog, so we can you can play back and then watch all those recordings later. So next one, I've got Francois to present. Yes, hi everyone. I'm gonna share my screen. Yes, we can see the um, screen. Okay, great. So hi, I'm Francois. Uh, it's my first time participating in a this for sure for sure good project and. Yeah, after having done my finished my Vs, I realized that everybody, everyone was building these fancy Vs about the entirety of uh, AWB activities. And I chose to focus only on the illustration of the impact value of a donation. And what struck me the most when uh, looking at the previous attempt to illustrate this, this uh, impact value was that, that yeah, I, I could not really easily understand or grasp what was going on and especially where these numbers were coming from and if this number had a link to the financials, uh, if it was uh, from the same data or not. And yeah, I thought instead of building a, a more, instead of building a more uh, abstract or fancy visualization, what was needed was maybe uh, simply more explanation. Uh, that's, that's my approach is really quite boring. It's just writing more text uh, with the idea to better guide the, the reader, that is a potential donor, through through the um, <clears throat> through the process, uh, and so they can understand why uh, AWB can make this claim that uh, donation have, have a sixfold impact and show that really the strength of uh, AWB is the it's the ability to leverage the resource from the partner institution and the expert consultant. Um, yeah, I chose the waffle charts because I like them. Could have been a pie chart or stacked bar chart. Uh, I built this in R, ggplot2, and then I used Affinity Designer for the layout. Um, this is the same uh, format as the annual report. And uh, and uh, I chose to present the info in two steps, but I'm not sure it's really useful or necessary. And yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot. I'm really grateful to, to, uh, uh, that I could participate in this project and uh, to have learned about this great uh, nonprofit. I hope my thoughts will be useful and thank you DataViz for social good. And uh, thank you for all the to all the participants because I learned a lot from you. That's awesome. Thanks, Francois. And I, I already love seeing non-Tableau, non-Power BI stuff. So you said you've done that. Ah, that's really awesome. And I guess if people have questions and follow-ups, we can always chat. So clap, clap, clap. Everybody's clapping. Uh, well done again. So next we have, sorry if I mispronounced, Swagat Kumar Jena. That, that was uh, a person that... Yeah. Uh, okay? Thanks, Frederick. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Swagat. I'm based out of Singapore. So I basically work as a Tableau consultant here. So I'll just share my screen. Yeah, we see it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just make it as a presentation mode. Okay. So here, uh, I basically wanted to tell this to a few important points about how it actually works. So I started with what education, uh, what is basically education, and then when this AWB Academics Without Borders was founded, and how many projects in how many countries, countries are there. So then we went, uh, I wanted to try to show the geographical view. And <clears throat> 
on top you have this calendar who, which, which works as a filter to see which year which i mean that specific year where all you had the projects so in the tooltip you have the one liner and the volunteering institution and if you go down you have each year so uh, just a second yeah so here i have already given an instruction so you have to click on the year to see the details of that for that specific year so i have used set actions in this so when you click it expands into the projects the places the partners the volunteering institutions and the hdi value so click back it goes to normal so it happens for all the years and now then i wanted to focus on the completed project so the year i mean i wanted to keep it simple easy for everyone to understand so i basically went for kind of a cross tab with a bar and then what are the net actual cost and the true value out of it going down uh, the model how it works so one awp volunteer teaches to five faculty members then each member teaches to 25 students and then each student uh, i mean they teach to 125 clients so that's how the model works and then the call to action by the awp oh i guess that's it from me thanks everyone for allowing me to present yeah. over thanks. to you frederick Thanks for that. I'm really amazed and stunned with the diversity. I don't know about you guys, but it's uh, 30 different stories and ways. So it's really, really awesome. Thanks. Uh, next on the line, I've got Adrian. Adrian. Yeah, it's Adrian Zinri. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to. Okay, good. Uh, second screen. But now you can see my screen, guys. Yeah, we can see your screen. Uh, so my name is Adrian Zinoe. So currently I'm based in uh, Toronto, Canada. So I'm working as a Tableau developer. Uh, so first of all, I want to thank you guys for the, for the amazing uh, work. I mean, especially like uh, social for, uh, this for social good guys. I mean, uh, like Vanita, Chloe, uh, Frederick, uh, Keith. I mean, you're doing an amazing job, guys. I don't know where you find the, the time for this. But that's amazing. <laughs> uh, and uh, not least uh, the AWT, uh, AWB uh, team. I mean, you, you're doing an amazing job, guys. I mean, because this is, um, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, thing that you're doing for the, for the world, you know, sharing your experience and uh, the knowledge. Uh, so basically what I wanted to achieve um, in, in this uh, dashboard was like, uh, just to make sure it's keeping it, keep it simple and capturing all 100% uh, of your data. So basically, uh, 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 the, the, the dashboard should answer to your question something like, okay, you have uh, mainly it's based on projects, you know, what kind of project? So in, in this case, it's like uh, what kind of discipline? So you have all the disciplines here and uh, in each discipline you can be with what kind of university actually the that that specific discipline and uh, is working with so it, you know, like like something like this like computer science you can see that there's just only one the, the university and the number of projects as well so and uh, the next question is like when so you have the data by projects by yearly where you can see the the, the countries and the the, the cities uh, because of the data i would say like data is quite like small i would say like skinny you know you, you don't have too much data and you have just only data for 11 projects so uh basically uh, you, you can i i just keep it i was trying to keep it simple so uh you have just all the list uh, of your projects here and whatever project you click, you can see the, the details on the right side and all the those small details like summary, what's the, the project number, what's the uh, location and all those indicators and the volunteer institution as well. And the thing is, uh, in my understanding was like, uh, if a company or 
like uh, uh, somebody wants to look at the dashboard, uh, I mean, of your project and they want to see, okay, so I want to see what, okay, I want to see which is this in medicine, for example. So it's quite simple because you just clicked and straight away you can see here only for the medicine, what countries on a yearly basis, and you can see in 2019, it's like the, the biggest one. And you can see like projects here. Uh, so I actually, I joined together all your data. Uh, basically, if you add in that uh, uh, worksheet, I mean, if you add all the financials you have, uh, you're going to see it here right away automatically. And you can see right now it's kind of like empty here. So if you click on one of the projects that you have on with money, so you can see all this financial here underneath and the details as well. Yeah. So basically, if you want to, to jump around with the, with the, the uh, and, and you can, you can like keep it uh, like a different so you can take like computer science, for example, and click on 2015. So you're gonna have in the end like three, three uh, project and so on. So basically my, my goal was to make sure that you guys are like having something like uh, very robust and you can just click around and see all those details. So even like, okay, I wanna see what India and you can see straight away what's going on with India. You wanna see something bigger uh, like Kenya. So you can see whatever disciplines they have, yearly stuff, they have uh, projects uh, here, you see the details and the financials. So yeah, so my goal is like to make sure you have 100% of your data in one page and you can work with it. Uh, as far as from this one, I have like other like- Sorry, like, 10 seconds, Adrian. Yeah, okay. So I have like, uh, I had like other few ideas, but this one was like simple because you know, like in the visual, uh, uh, and then you just, you just need to move the mouse over and it will just show you like the impact. So the simple one is coming from this like small dot and it's growing, growing, growing to five. And you put the mouse over, you can see the, what, uh, what's the detail and for the teach the teacher as well. So yeah, uh, kind of like this, yeah. <laughs> I love okay. it. Thanks, Adrian. I think it's a okay. comprehensive tool as well that uh, the it could be. I would using. say like it's a tool that you can go and, and click uh, and jump, and you can just click one country, click one year, click one discipline, and you're, you're gonna see the details, you know. And well done. It's kind of like you have everything in your your hand, yeah. And you can also like you can uh, always like uh, update the data, the financials, and it will be automatically here as well. I just send you a virtual clap. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Cool. Loved it. So next, we have Samantha. Thanks. Um, yep, I share my screen. Um, thank you to WIS for Social Good and Academics Without Borders for access to the data and uh, the chance to present today. So I'm fairly new to Tableau, so I've built really simple charts. Um, just so. Uh, I have built in total five charts in here, and uh, the first three charts show countries that have benefited from the projects, the universities that have benefited, and the volunteering uh, institutes. And you can drill this down uh, based on the year. So for now, I'll just let this uh, show all. Uh, once you hover over the bars, you can see that the, the breakup across all the disciplines. So Kenya has benefited from 22 projects across all the years, and most of it has been in medicine. So, um, yep, the uh, universities benefited also is very similar. University of Liberia has 14 projects and uh, 13 are not specified, and one is in economics. And volunteering institutes, uh, Dalhousie University from Canada is the top performer. Yeah, with uh, 19 projects in medicine, one in statistics, and one uh, not specified. Um, the data can be drilled down across uh, all the years. And it takes a while to update here. Yeah. So this is how it works. And moving on to my next chart. This is a bit static in nature. This is uh, this one displays popular disciplines across all the years. From this, you can see that medicine has been a very popular discipline with 36 projects in medicine. 
Uh, the second runner is uh, computer science with 13 projects and nursing and public health are six projects each. On hovering over the other bubbles, you can see the number of projects that um, have been conducted in that particular discipline as well. Um, my last, uh, let me move this a bit. Yep. Uh, my last chart shows the year-wise project counts. Um, the, from this chart, we can see that 2017 has been a super year for AWB. And on hovering over this, you can see the breakup of the projects country-wise and also discipline-wise. So my goal was to uh, uh, show as much data as I could without it uh, seeming very confusing. Um, so yeah, I was on the fence of including 2020 because it's just one project. Uh, 2020 is not really a year. That's my personal opinion. Um, so that's it from my end. Thanks, Amata. And if you said that you're just starting with Tableau, that's really awesome. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, and I guess if you if if you wanted some feedback, I don't know. There's there's probably a lot of people that are Tableau experts or consultants. If people want to share, if you want to learn from others' feedback, I think you continue the discussion in the Slack and then engage and connect with each other. Yes, it's a great of way to learn as well. Yeah. Cool. Thanks Thank again. You. Um, well done. So next, I've got Jen presenting. Sam, if you can maybe stop sharing yep. your screen and that's it. Jen, you here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, I'm Jen. Um, I'm in Tucson, Arizona. Um, and so let me get my screen share up. And make sure I'm sharing everything. So I focused on a couple um, different things, primarily the scale of impact and then the different um, programs and their impact. So I was trying to find a way of comparing the donations to the total value. At the top here, I kind of have a summary of how the average uh, donations go to the total true project value with this increase of 6.1 times. And then I did it by individual project that we had. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if it went kind of weird for you all, but it kind of shifted over here. Um, let me just pull it up again. There we go. Um, for each project that we had financials for, I showed the donations on the left-hand side in gray and then went up to the total value in blue. So trying to show in a different way how um, the total true value with the volunteering and all of that brings up the total um, from the donations. And then I looked at the two different programs and here I did with points, what the one visiting instructor in pink and then the 25 students impacted by that, and then the, the 1,250 clients imp impacted by all of those students. Um, I felt that showing kind of the volume of the dots helps show the impact of the program, which some other people have done too. Uh, and then Teach the Teacher program is a similar visualization, um, although I had trouble with the size of the dots because there are so many. Um, but again, the volunteer, and then the faculty, and then the students, and then the clients. Um, so those are my three different graphs that I made and thanks to Viz for Social Good and thanks back to Academics Without Borders and thanks all of you all because it's been really cool to see everybody's visualizations on here. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks Jen. Yeah, that's always cool and it's a lot of dots. Eh? That means a lot of people have been helped by, um, by those guys. A really amazing story. Um, Amanda is next. If you want to. Yes. Hello. Um, my name is Amanda, um, and I'm a PhD student out of the University of Waterloo um, in Waterloo, Ontario, uh, although I'm actually in uh, North Bay at the moment, um, which pretty much just means it's a little bit colder, about four hours north. All right, I'm going to share my screen for you now, and I'll just go to full screen. So when I took a look at um, the Academics Without Borders data and the um, website and the annual reports that they gave to us, something that was very clear to me was that they already had um, a really good like design and they, they were already pretty experienced in visualizing data. I would, I would venture a guess that there's a designer or they, they work with a designer in, in some context. So I tried to kind of think uh, a little bit about not necessarily what I would want, um, but something that you hadn't already done. So um, for the projects, what that meant to me was um, giving you a visualization where you could look at all the projects on kind of like a single screen. 
Um, so I've done essentially what is just a chart uh, where each dot represents a project and where you can hover over the project to see the project um, description and the partner institution in the country. Um, and you can also filter by a uh, kind of subject area at the bottom. Oh, that went a little weird for me. Mine went to the side too, just like Jen's did. Um, I can show you on here. Let me just. Um, Samantha, or sorry, Amanda, I'm sorry, I misspoke your name. Um, when I, when mine did that, I, I got rid of the full screen and went back to full screen and that, like I hit escape on my keyboard and then went back to full screen and that fixed it for me. There we go. I'm just going to not be in full screen. It's fine. Um, so yeah, you can um, kind of see, highlight like which area the projects are on. And these are also filters and you can click and filter um, by the projects or by the year or by country um, on the column side. Uh, one of the other things that was asked for was visualization of the um, teach the teacher model. And when I looked at that, um, I immediately thought, you know, node link diagram because it's a, this is the kind of thing that nodes and links are made for, I think. Um, but I'm not a fan of a lot of text on visualizations personally, so I chose to really leverage the hover action here. So as you hover over each uh, node, you kind of get the story. So you get who the node is supposed to represent and you get um, the story that is described. So one visiting member to five local faculty um, to local students. And um, I chose to do uh, 10 per node for clients because I also had issues with the size of the dots, just as, as Jen mentioned. Um, and then if you compare that to the visiting instructor um, model, you can kind of immediately see the difference in impact when it's displayed in this kind of node link way. Uh, and then lastly, for the um, financials, um, I started thinking about all the kind of creative ways I could create something to help people explore. Uh, the financials data, like a tree map or something like that. But, you know, I, I came to realize that you, there was really one story um, based on the, the call for visualizations that um, they wanted to tell, which was, you know, actual costs covered by our funders, but really the biggest value contributed is time and expertise. So I opted for a simple bar chart um, that has marks on it. So just area marks telling the reader of the visualization what they're supposed to take, take away from it. Uh, yeah, and that is it for me. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to present. This is actually my first Viz for Social Good project, and it was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Thanks, Samantha. And I saw a lot of the node link, and I think I saw a couple of comments popping that uh, there's a lot, a lot of node link lovers, so you probably need to write a blog. And because I've, I've tried to do the node link and failed miserably, so it looks like you've, you've cracked so it. So I actually linked. Um, I used an article that somebody has already done all the hard stuff for us. So I used oh. an article and I linked that in my Tableau public link. So if oh, anyone wants really? to see a node link diagram, take a look at that article. It takes a bit of time, but it's way easier than doing it from scratch. <laughs> Still like an artist. Well done. And it looks beautiful as well. So well done. Thank and that story. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, next, I've got um, Natalia. Hi. Natalia. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Just give me one moment. Okay, hopefully you can see it now. Yes. Perfect. Uh, okay, so hi everyone. I'm Natalia. I'm a data visualization and analysis consultant. I'm calling in from London today. So it's uh, 10 minutes past 12 at midnight but I was really keen to see everybody's visualizations. I think um, everybody has done a fantastic job, so I didn't mind staying up at all. Um, so as far as my, uh, my visualization, I started out with a few considerations um, to bear in mind when I looked at the project brief on the This for Social Good uh, website. I wanted to consider the audience. Uh, I wanted to keep the design clean and stick on the brand pillars, just in case uh, AWB wanted to use the visualization in their materials. As I could see, that was one of the aims of the project. And I wanted to tell a story with AWB's impressive achievements, but tell the story in numbers. Rather than, um, rather than just text, uh, which is uh, what they currently have in a lot of their reports and the website as well. 
So I focused on five key areas. I started out with uh, their vision, so telling what they're all about. Uh, then I uh, have a few sections about the projects. I'm looking into the financials, the teach the teacher model versus the visiting instructor model. And I'm finishing it off with call to action to support AWP. So here is my visualization. Uh, I produced it in a tablet. So uh, as we said, I'm starting here with the vision. Uh, the vision really resonated with me and it was one of the reasons why I decided to participate in the project. I don't always have time for uh, participating in all of the VIS for Social Good projects, but I, I love the idea and the mission. Then I'm uh, visualizing over here the countries uh, that benefit from the project each year. So we can see the average as well. The project count per year and obviously the project per uh, country. So we can see here, Kenya has uh, benefited from the most number of projects and Africa in, in, in total has benefited from the most number of projects as it's uh, one of the continents in most need. So definitely makes sense. Uh, so it's interactive as well. You can click on Kenya, for example, and then you can see the disciplines, uh, partner institutions and volunteering institutions for Kenya. Let me just reset this. And coming, uh, scrolling down here, we have the financials and the teaching model. So in the teaching model, particularly, I have used circles as well. Um, and when you hover over a circle, you can see, for example, in the citizen benefited uh, area, how small one circle is and how many citizens are benefited. So the impact is huge there. And I'm just finishing off here with support AWB with a link to their uh, website for further information. So that's my visualization. Thank you for listening. Any questions you can let me know, just contact me. Thanks, Natalia. It's a really polished, beautiful dashboard. Wow, Thank you. I'm impressed. Cap, cap, cap. Just figuring out how I can stop sharing. <laughs> oh, I don't know, maybe press escape or there's a button somewhere. Yeah. Um, so next I've got Ram, Ramya. Yeah, uh, I'll try sharing this. It's probably at the top of your screen. Oh yeah, it's uh, probably at the top of your screen. I think Natalia cool. is still sharing, so you need to uh, oh, unshare. Okay. Sorry about that. Go to the top. That's it. Yeah. Got it. So are you able to see my screen? Yes, it's coming up. Uh, hi, it. everyone. Uh, my name is Ramya. I work as a data analyst. Um, so I'm strong with coding and programming, but not very good in visualization. So I gave it my best try. Um, so uh, this visualization, the map visualization, the rationale behind this is to show the global footprint of uh, AWB. Um, so it's it's a gra gradient style visualization. The deeper the color, uh, the more the projects has been uh, done there. And it's also interactive. If you click here, it will um, drill down to the next visualization, which shows the discipline of, uh, which shows the uh, count of projects in each discipline. Uh, so this is this will give the uh, rough overview of um, the projects which is um, undergone uh, in various parts of the world. And moving to the uh, cost visualization. So uh, I saw AWB wanted to um, know about a different way to visualize their cost. So uh, I tried it with the funnel visualization. So uh, the total cost is contributed by these three um, component uh, items, the volunteer time donation and the partner uh, funding. So um, I thought this is, uh, from my point of view, this um, stepwise visualization will give an effective way to uh, show the total cost and uh, how it is contributed from different elements. And finally, the bar chart here, I wanted to show the impact of 
teach the teacher model and um, to show how um, it's five times the single volunteer model. So I wanted to show that by uh, side by side and um, how it's five times uh, magnified when you uh, empower the local uh, university. So that is the rationale behind this. And the last pane is a text pane. So this is where I tie up uh, what, what this visualization is meaning to the individuals um, stakeholders we are targeting so this the universities um, they can look at the visualization and um, get a rough view, overview of what has been going on with awb and how their donation the do, uh, donors can know how their donation money is going to get impacted and the volunteers uh, so this visualization will also be useful for uh, volunteers to know like what under what disciplines uh, work has been going on in awb and how their time is go contributing to the total value and how uh, how their time is going to impact the consumers in that zone so uh, it's it's a bit textual here but i thought that explanation is necessary so that's it my that's it from my end thanks Rania. that is very uh, awesome analysis clap 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 and it's also awesome to see a, a different tool power bi there's a different tool uh, different analysis really, really awesome next one i've got um dara and a friend dara um you ready to go dara Every, everyone, yeah, yeah, I'll start sharing my screen. Hang on, I'm just resetting my watch. One second. Sorry. All right. Can everyone see that? Yes. No worries. Okay, so like Amanda, I've looked into the, uh, the Node Link network diagram as well. So a bit of background about me, I, I work, actually work in education here in Australia and I actually know Frederick from a past, uh, past life uh, at a higher education institution. So this is um, a subject very close to my own heart. Um, unfortunately, I, I, I wish I could have done a lot more because I, but I read, work conspired to, um, to eat up a lot of my time over the last couple of weeks. So the network diagram is as far as I got, but um, it did take me quite a bit to figure out um, so um, they're not exactly straightforward because this is done in Tableau and it's, um, uh, Tableau doesn't natively support uh, design, using network diagrams. So um, um, what you can see here is essentially when I, when I saw the data, I immediately thought, you know, this is essentially a network of higher education institutions working uh, together across the world. And so essentially that, that's why the network uh, or node link diagram really appealed to me. Um, what you can see here, I'm going to keep it fairly brief, is we've got a, a number of nodes here and each node represents essentially an institution and they can either be um, a, a volunteering higher education uh, institution who, sent, who sends a practitioner to a partner institution in, in the developing world. Um, so each node here, you can, you can hover over the nodes and find out some very basic information uh, about these uh, uh, universities and higher ed institutions. Um, and then each line uh, is, a, is an edge, a connecting edge between the nodes. And what I've done here is just use the tooltip to kind of, you can hover over these edges and kind of get some very basic information about the project which connects the nodes. Um, what also we can do is using parameter actions in, in, um, in Tableau, you can click on these nodes and then quickly get an idea of the various ways in which these institutions connect to each other. So for example, um, sorry, I didn't click on that one correctly. University of Cape Coast, which it was mentioned before, it has worked with a lot of other partners or what, and a lot of other higher education institutions. And you can quickly see that um, the certain ones work work a lot or participate a lot in academics without border borders and uh, other ones have only kind of done one or two kind of um, projects together um, the colors uh, as you probably picked up the the yellow nodes kind of indicate uh, a higher education institution who's you know receiving the benefit of the project while the red nodes are uh, are other ones um uh, sending out their academics to to, to help train practitioners and in, in the uh, developing world so 
it's fairly straightforward. I wish I had more time to kind of explore the data set a bit more like uh, some of the other people who are, who are presented. Um, the, the organization of the network is actually quite random. I, I use a tool called Gephi and a, and a couple of algorithms in there. Um, however, it does organize the nodes close together. Um, and that's essentially it uh, for the time being. So something kind of quick and, uh, well, it took me probably a full, full day of work um, to kind of get this up and running. Um, and yeah, as I said, I wish I had a bit more time, but um, that's the way it happens. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for allowing me to present. Thanks, Tara. I think that's awesome. I love those things. And as I said, I tried myself and your work. So <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, did I did I miss anyone? Is there anyone in the, uh, in the Zoom call that wanted to present that I missed from my list? Oh, we all we all happy. Uh, and the uh, next question is: Are we going with time, Vanessa? How much time do we have left? We have nine minutes left. So do you, uh, you wanted to showcase a couple of other ones? I'll, I'll leave it to you, Frederick. Yeah, just very quickly, because we had, uh, as I said, close to 30 uh, people submitting or 15 presented. Uh, so there's a lot of people that say, no, I can't, I can't make it. So I'm going to share my screen and um, show you a couple that, um, uh, hang on, if I can share my screen. That'd be funny if I can't share my screen. Can you see my screen now? No, it just says, oh, there we go, yes. Yeah, so this one is from Saga, Saga Dury. So obviously you can't, you can't make it. Uh, so that's a very nice uh, data viz as well. It shows a map, uh, a lot of expression at the top, uh, big numbers at the, at the top, those big bands, uh, and dot to just basically display the, uh, the project. Um, and uh, a nice little viz there to, uh, to display the um, uh, HDI, Human Development Indexes. I think that's, that was quite, quite clever. And it went with the dots as well. Um, and a lot of expression and just to, exp to expand on the uh, impact of visiting the structure model and the teacher model. So one, one small dot makes a huge impact, which I think is uh, awesome. And uh, interesting explanation about the, um, the donation. So I think this one was uh, a good one. Um, next one from Satoshi. Yeah, uh, uh, this one blew my socks, blew my mind because it's very, very technical, a lot of stuff. Uh, so he started with a, a, a map uh, and he's, he's tech on displaying the, oh, Tableau Public is refreshing my page, sorry. The live demo gods. Uh, so displaying dots on, on every single country. I think that was interesting tech. Uh, this one, I don't know, it's called, I don't know if it's some, crazy shanky, shanky chart, but uh, I thought it was quite interesting. Uh, it takes a while to get your head around, but I think it's quite powerful. Um, so you got the contributing the, the foundation uh, and the impact. That was interesting charts and interesting analysis. This one is, is even more crazy, I think. Mm. If someone knows how, how you call this one, but it's, uh, it's kind of nuts, but it's really nicely done. So well done. Um, uh, Satoshi on this one. So uh, we obviously share all those public link, the, the links on later, so you can have a bit of a play and, and browse, but um, really nice analysis and uh, really nicely done. Um, and the last one I wanted to share, if I can. It's Noel, Noel, Noel uh, from Indonesia. Uh, beautiful design. I think Noel was the first one to, to submit. And uh, is, I forgot what those things are called. I think they're called bubble charts, I think. But uh, you can, I don't know if you can see very well the uh, hand drawn type of style. I think it's really stunning. Uh, same thing is visualize the, the power of the network, and the one bubble makes a huge impact. I think. But it's really awesome with design and, and a nice analysis and design. So I wish Noel would have been here to present, but. Uh, those are just beautiful. I think I would print this one and frame it. Um, and I think on, if you follow him on LinkedIn or on Twitter, I think he, he quoted where he got the inspiration from. I think there's someone else who did uh, the same kind of concept. With, uh, I think it's called Pack Bubble Chart, I think, from memory. But it's, uh, so there's a blog out there if, you, if you're keen to learn how to make this one. But I think those are the, the three I wanted to, to showcase very quickly. Um, so I'll end to you know, um, Vanita for the, uh, the close-up with uh, 
Greg and Wendy. Mandy, sorry. Yes, I think before that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, to Keith to say a few words, and then uh, Greg will will uh, turn it over to you. I think we have a lot of questions around how you plan to use some of the visualization, so maybe you can uh, think about that while Keith is uh, uh, doing his part. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for the time that you all spent. It's it's really cool to see all of your work, and we're we're really grateful for the way that you have helped Academics with Borders tell their story and tell their impact. So. Thank you again for taking the time to do this. If you enjoyed this and you are looking to do this again, we are finalizing the details of our next project. It'll go live at the end of this month. And we're partnering with an organization called Bridges to Prosperity. So if you've done Makeover Monday, you may have heard of them before. Uh, the Makeover Monday project par uh, partnered with them a while ago. And we have a new data set from them that looks at some of the bridges they've built recently in Rwanda and some survey data so that you can get the, you can help them tell the story of their impact and how those bridges have connected people to educational uh, healthcare opportunities and other things like that. So hope that some of you will be able to join. If you need to take a break from this, just tell a friend. We would love to see their submissions as well uh, and really appreciate your time tonight. You can keep an eye on our website, by the way, to see those details. And then if you're on social media, we're on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, and Instagram as well. So we'll post details about that as soon as those, uh, the data set is ready. Great, thank you, Keith. Um... Greg and Mindy, over, over to you. I mean, I, I was impressed when I reviewed some of these things um, on my own with the, with the links that were provided, but having seen this presentation and felt your passion and your excitement about your work and your commitment uh, to Viz for Social Good, this is, uh, as I say in England, I'm gobsmacked. It's uh, absolutely incredible. And, and the quality of the work is, is amazing. We've gotten so many ideas, some really good useful criticisms of some of our, uh, of our current uh, visualizations and, and lots of really wonderful ideas uh, for, for things we might uh, pursue further with some of you. Um, the uh, way we use the visualizations and we're, or we're planning to, there's probably maybe two or three different ways. One is that we're always trying to refresh our website and, and to, to put new presentations of the material there. Our website you know, you, you all, a lot of you talked about the audience, um, you know, as the executive director of this place, it's interesting is that the website, and I don't know what your experiences are, but my experiences is, is that the website actually, it's visited, but it's not like everybody goes to the website all of the time. And, and it's this sort of thing that gets a lot of, of, of visitation every day or anything. Uh, it's, it's high enough and it's interesting, but Every time I speak to anyone, it doesn't matter whether it's someone who's a donor or someone I'm hoping we might collaborate with or someone in government or someone in, a, in another agency that uh, we might be able to do some exciting things with. First thing they do is go to the website. And if it looks tired and old and, uh, uh, and, and worn out, it, it just doesn't do us any good. If it looks like the, the kinds of of vivid ways that, that you folks have suggested here, it gives an entirely different message. It gives a message of a vibrant, active, alive, uh, innovative organization. So it's, it's, I found it's incredibly important. We also have some regular communications that we do. We do updates about what, half a dozen times a year to different parts of our community, to our network universities, and to all of our, we have a large mailing list. And some of the ideas that, that you've uh, put forward here would, would work very well in, in those as, as, as well. We also do an annual report every year. And, and I think some of you saw some of the visualizations in it. Um, there too, the simpler, but the more, the people don't want to spend, I, I, one thing, I've learned over the years is, you know, the, the, the less you say, uh, the more it gets read. And so the more you can communicate in an easy kind of way, uh, the more you communicate. Uh, you know, an 80 page paper may be comprehensive, but it doesn't communicate anything, I fear. And you're talking to an academic, you know, so I, I, I've had to learn this in the hard way. Um, and the, the, the other piece we do is we have something we call a one pager. So it's really just a very simple, it's, it's no longer an actual page most of the time, but it's something we provide virtually. And it gives a really short over, overview of the organization. And again, some of the, the ideas that you've put forward would be brilliant and really help us get the story across. So I, I think 
there's a number of important ways that we could use this work. And I'm happy to answer any questions that people have now or, or later um, uh, at any time. But again, thank you uh, with all my heart. You folks have done a, a wonderful job. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I, I have. You've certainly worked a lot harder on it than I have. <laughs> And, uh, and I hope that, that you gained, you know, as in your own profession, as you, you did some of this work and developed new ideas. And I could hear that from many of you as you made your presentations. Excellent. Okay, so I think that, that concludes our event. Chloe, you had a great idea. Shall we take a, a team photo? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the things that we love as a Beast for Social Good team is always take a photo. So I'll give you guys a couple seconds, you know, <laughs> to get ready for the photo. Yeah, you, you all look great. Let me check. Wow. Mariana, you look great. <laughs> Everybody look great. Okay, so if you... If you want to just... Are you ready for the shot? What? What? No, I was talking to Ian Graham, who was, uh, I, I knew him from earlier, and he's on the board of AWB, so he's the one that introduced <laughs> uh, the team. Turn your cameras on, please, everyone. Oh, wow, everybody's turning on their video, yes. Oh, great, hi, good to see everybody. <laughs> okay, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wait, should we post something all together, or just like smiling? Anyone have a good idea? Okay, if not, just smiling. Okay, uh, let's smile. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> huh? Keep your eyes open. <laughs> oh, keep your eyes open. Let's do a normal one and let's do a B, like B's for social good. Oh, that looks so Asian. <laughs> okay, let's, <laughs> let's just smile. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay, I got three photos, so it should be good. Let's do another one with B. <laughs> okay. Cheese. Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye everyone. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good night, guys. Good night for whoever. Good morning. Bye -bye. Good night. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye, -bye, guys. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye, guys. Well done, Vinita. You did well. I'm adding that. Uh, who's still on? I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Thanks. So, time for Bye. a second coffee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> go to work now. Need to go to work. Okay. Ciao. Bye.